Hello, welcome to another walk in the spirit. I'm Steve, come with me as we have another walk. I'm going to be hiking, uh, uh, walking a specific trail I've been itching to go on for probably a year, year and a half. I did one hiking video down this trail and it was beautiful. And I said, I wanna come back. I've been waiting for it. So here we are. Now this is the forest, is my favorite forest to hike. Done many, many videos in this forest, but it's huge. And I've done most of it on video. This, I've not done a ministry video on, but here we go. Enjoy this hike, this walk with you today. Well, here it is, folks. We are at the fall feasts. Uh, my brother, Kevin Huckman, he did a video, a short video. I think it's like only, I don't know, 30 seconds long on his channel. If you haven't seen it, you can find it here. If I've run out of room and don't put it there because I have other videos to link, I'll link it down below in the description. He loves to preach on the, on the fall feasts. He knows much more about it than I do. Um, he is heavily leaning towards the rapture happening on it, but he also has understood and recommends now that the, the rapture can happen at any time. But I also agree there are so many things with the fall feast that make you think it could happen. We're going to talk a little about that today. About we've already discussed in the last couple months. I believe the rapture is super near. Now, originally, I thought that during this fall feast, the uh, the, the Ezekiel 38 war would happen, and at the end of the Ezekiel 38 war, my opinion that the Antichrist would reveal himself and that would start the the tribulation and I believe he would confirm a covenant Daniel 9 27 uh, the first I'll probably do only the first half of that verse I'll put it on the screen you take a look at it something like he shall confirm a covenant with many for a week or something like that Oh, there's a snake. Talking about the Antichrist, and here comes a snake. Very interesting. Now, my nephew, he likes to hike with me. He's always looking for snakes. Um, I'm not a fond fan of them. But if I see them, it's interesting to see them. But I don't see them here very often. Anyways, I showed you the scripture. And... I believe that's going to happen at the Ezekiel 38 war. Now I did remake that video this year. If you haven't seen my Ezekiel 38 war video, Ezekiel 38, 39, you can find that video here. I'm going to check my notes. I'll be right back. All right. So I warned that, uh, Israel would be starting their second war with Hezbollah. And that has been very, very intense. They expected it to be a long, hard struggle because they're much more war ready than Hamas. But praise God, they've had great victory. Almost 90% of their leadership has been eliminated. I mean, just in the last two days, they they announced Hezbollah announced they had a new leader to replace the one that they had assassinated, and it already looks like Israel assassinated. I'm not certain, but the place that he was supposedly hiding at, they bombed it with other leaders, and they believe they've already wiped out 50% of their missiles. So there's still a 50% amount of their missiles that need to be destroyed or captured. A lot of the soldiers are still running around. They have they have begun their ground assault. And if you go on my channel, I do I do post videos from Amir and TBN, and I highly recommend checking out my posts for those really good videos on what's happening in Israel. So saying it Hezbollah is not completely destroyed, but they're severely hampered praise God they're 
reign of error and terror reign of terror on Israel is ending. Not complete, but they're getting there. Uh, Hamas is almost fully destroyed. They're still fighting there, but not much. But what I'm saying is, we're talking about, I'm pointing towards the fact of, of the beginning of Soros. We've been in the beginning of Soros seven years. And on September 23rd, which is just like, a, I don't know, a week, a week and a half ago, that was seven years ago, I believe it started. And we've talked a little about this in the recent couple of weeks. But if you've not seen my beginning of Soros video, I made like three versions of it. And we're seven years done with it. That, is, that doesn't mean the beginning of Soros has ended. But I believe it's ramping up towards the tribulation. If you haven't seen my beginning of Soros video, you can see version three here. The beginning of Soros is a similitude of when a woman begins to give birth to a child. She goes through sorrows. She goes through the birth pains. And, they, and they're small, but they go, become more frequent and they get stronger. And that's what's been happening for seven years. If you see my video, I talk about these in details. Lots of natural disasters. Again, we just had a huge one in the United States. The Southeast Wisconsin got, I'm sorry, Southeast United States got whomped really hard with this hurricane. Judgment is coming on the world and especially on America. America will cease to exist as a world power soon. And I've talked about this in another video. Let me pull up my notes. I believe it was in uh, Walk in the Spirit, July 20th, I called it. Will America become great again? You can check out that video here. I'm not going to go over all the details. But the second half of that video especially, I discuss why I believe America's status as a world power will end. I'm not going to go over all those things again. Please see that video. It's a really, really good video. I know that is a, a dig on Trump's statement of Make America Great Again. And I discuss Trump and the state of the United States, what I believe prophetically concerning what the Bible points towards. Please see that video. I don't know what it means, where it will happen. I gave a couple of possibilities. One, we have a rapture. That's going to get rid of the conservative vote. Getting conser conservative voice. And he, and he pulls us out of here. That would change. Something has to change. Please see that video. America's not going to be there for Israel during the Ezekiel 38 war. Something has to change. It could be Trump doesn't win. Could be that. Maybe the maybe the rapture happens after Trump wins the election. Maybe the election happens after the rapture, and they can't uh, and they don't have enough votes for conservatives. What I'm saying or trying to say is this: we are deep in the beginning of sorrows. It's not ending. That it'll end soon. Once. Daniel 9 27 happens then the, the tribulation begins so that means things are ramping up look how fast look how fast and how intense the Hezbollah war has things are moving quickly that's why I th I'm saying I believe the rapture will happen any day any day now is it gonna happen I don't know I believe so but I could be wrong I'll do a spin here because I'm not sure which way I'm going to go. Eventually I have to go this way, but I don't think it might be too soon to go that way, but I think I'll go that way anyways. So what's my point? It's time to get ready. And early spring, I warned it might be too late for unbelievers to be saved, born again, and rapture ready. It could still happen. And if you're saved and you're pursuing the born again experience it may or may not be too late okay read 
what is it? He, uh, I'm sorry, Matthew. I'll put the reference on the screen, but I think it's Matthew 25 about the 10 virgins. Five were ready and five were not ready. And that's going to happen. There will be people who will not be ready when the rapture happens. Oh. I'm not saying don't give up hope. Because even if you do miss the rapture, you, you will not miss the kingdom. Now, you might die for your faith during the tribulation. Some will survive, but very, very few. There will be some Christians who survive. But the point is, it's not too late if you miss the rapture to be born again and make it into the kingdom. Obviously, you've missed the rapture, but you're not going to miss the kingdom. There will be greater Christians after the rapture than before the rapture. I, I highly convinced there will be... There will be disciples, people who pursue Christ stronger than me and the rest of us who do get raptured. And that's why I'm saying if, if you're one of those Christians, you've lingered too long, but you want Christ, it's still time to learn and know Christ and still time to make it to the kingdom, but you may not be raptured. Now I want to talk about this, turn this a, a little bit different direction. Obviously, I preach a lot on theology. I preach a lot on doctrines. And the born experience centers around knowing the truth of Galatians 2.20. We've been crucified in Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. Put it on the screen, but I'm not going to quote the whole thing. And as well as Romans 6, maybe Romans 6.6, 6, Romans 6. I'll put the reference on the screen. You can check that one out. And talks about there. See, we died in Christ. And if you accept the first work of the cross, that Jesus died for your sins, you're saved. You're making it to heaven. But that doesn't mean you're going to make it into the kingdom. You'll make it into heaven. But the kingdom is God's government, God's city. If you're saved and don't make it into the kingdom, if you're not born again, you won't be allowed in his city. You'll have to live outside the city. Of other videos, see my my video on the gospel of the kingdom. You can find it here. If I if I run out of room, it'll be down below. Please check my description. That's an important video, most important video ever made. The gospel of the kingdom. It's not too late. It might be too late. Might be too late to get to the rapture. I could be wrong. So there is a doctrinal truth that some people don't grasp when they believe that Jesus died for their sins. They don't know the truth that they died on the cross with Christ. But there is another way. Am I saying that that truth isn't valid? It's still valid. But I know personally that I came to know Christ personally through pains in my life before knowing the truth and I've been crucified in Christ. So what I'm going to talk about now for the rest of this video is to know Christ. Perhaps you don't understand all these doctrines, these theologies, and it takes time to learn them. That's fine. Continue on that. But until you do learn it, you can still pursue Christ. You can pursue Christ himself to know him. I've given my testimony. I'll, I'll link it down below. Okay. How I left of the military to become a Catholic monk and uh, I was in the, I was in the Air Force and I was in an ungodly relationship and it didn't work out and she broke my heart and um, because I was living in sin with her I had heart ties that shouldn't have been there due to sin and um, I despised of life. I, I considered ending my life. I, I hated the pain I was going through. That didn't mean I was suicidal, but I was on the verge of being suicidal. It was a tough, tough time. So what I did, because I was this one, I was, I was in the Catholic Church. I started going out on walks. That's why I do these walk in the spirits, and I discussed this at the beginning of my videos and channel. 
I started doing walks in the wilderness and trails and I started asking Jesus to go with me to heal my heart to speak to me and I began to know him by pursuing him I'd go on these walks and I would pray now sadly many times people will come to know to Christ pursue a relationship with him through a trouble in their life that's just a fact sorry for interrupting I've actually walked and hiked this area so we turned back there I said I wasn't sure if I wanted to turn there and I've walked into an area that I have hiked before so this area is not new but I don't know if I've done a ministry video here. I definitely hiked over here before. So what I am saying here, there are definitely difficult times these days. This is a good time if you have a struggle in your life to turn to Christ and to use that struggle to find Him. Because He will use that struggle to change you so you may develop a relationship with him. Pursue Christ, pursue him. He's there knocking at your door of your heart. You might not get all the doctrines down right, okay? Before the rapture, that's true. But he has time to work on your heart while you're still here. While to still call today, pursue Him. Pursue Him. And He can change you. He can transform you, even before you have all the doctrines right. And that will actually help you. You'll get the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will lead you into all truth. I believe it's in John, where he talks about the anointing that resides within you will lead you into all truth. I've preached on that a few times. Let me put that verse on the screen. So you see, when you believe that Christ died for you on the cross for your sins, you get the seal of the Holy Spirit. That's just the beginning portion. I've talked about this. And I'll link to a video on Five Room here. I'll link to it down below. And that, uh, that God works in you. First, when you believe in Christ, you get sealed. But it's just a beginning portion. But there's more of the Holy Spirit. But when you pursue Christ... You start getting more of Him and more of the Holy Spirit, and your life changes. And once you get the Holy Spirit, you get the, you get the truth much more easy because you're opened to Him, the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Himself. And then all the bad stuff gets pulled out of you, and you drop it as you pursue Christ. You get away from traditions and bad religion and bad doctrine and bad theology as you pursue Christ in Him, and He begins to clean you up. This is what I'm preaching today. Whether or not you have time to be born again and to know Christ before the rapture, I don't know. But it isn't too late to pursue Him for the kingdom, for your eternal place in the kingdom. I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about making into the city, making into the kingdom, God's government, to rule and reign with Christ in his city. Okay, please see my Gospel of the Kingdom video earlier or down below. It's not fun to change your life over to Christ, to let him rule and reign in your heart. But when you are going through a struggle, that is an opportune time to find him and change things for the better. I did. I did. And I, and I started to find the truth afterwards. Went to Bible school afterwards. 
he'll clean you up. He's the author and finisher of your faith. I believe that's in Philippians. I'll put that on the screen. He's doing a work in you. If you pursue him, and he will work in you if you let him. Let him be your Lord. Let him be your king. Let him guide you and lead your life. Your life choices. Let him lead you in them. Pray about them, where you work, where you live, how you should walk, your choices in life. Let him help you make those choices in your life. It's never too late while you're on in this earth alive to pursue Christ. It might be too late to get raptured, but it's not too late to pursue him, to know him, and make it in the kingdom. Okay? And I'm not saying it's too late to get raptured. I just know the Bible says it will be too late for half the church. I'm fully convinced. Go read it. I think it's Matthew 25. Five are ready, five are not ready. I'm not talking about salvation, folks. I'm talking about being raptured. And believing that Jesus died for your sins is not enough to get you raptured. It's enough to get you saved, but not enough to get you raptured. Please see my other videos. Well, folks, that's it. That's all I want to share. I wanted to bring you this time and season we're in. Things are happening quickly, very quickly. The beginning of sorrows will continue until the Ezekiel 38 war. At the end of the Ezekiel 38 war, which I believe is going to be happening soon, then the tribulation will begin. I do have a video on when will the tribulation begin, when will um, Daniel 9.27 occur. I can't remember the name of it, but I do have a video. If I have room, I'll put it here. Otherwise, look in the description below. Look for that video. I don't remember what it's called. I'll put the name of it here, and you can click on it below. Well, that's it, folks. I know not a long video. It's not a video a lot on doctrine. A lot of summary about things we've been discussing this summer. Time is short. The rapture can happen any day. It can, I think even more so during these fall feasts. Yeah, I know they, as uh, Kevin noted in Uptime last week, Sure, they already celebrated the Feast of Trumpets, but they did it a month early. That's okay. God has his own timing, and men don't always follow God's timing. The rapture will happen when the rapture will happen. And sometimes, I personally, I believe that feast, the Feast of Trumpets will be officially recognized and fulfilled when Jesus comes back seven years after the... the uh, Daniel 9.27. Okay? So, I believe uh, we'll see the Antichrist show up after the Ezekiel 38 war. Please see my video on Ezekiel 38 war. Um, he will allow them to build their temple. That will be the confirming of the covenant. And uh, they will accept the Antichrist as their Messiah. But obviously, he is the Antichrist. He's fooling them. And he will seek to break his covenant and agreement with them halfway through that seven year tribulation will he will invade Israel and perform a sacrilege against God by claiming himself as God as he goes into the temple and profanes it well we talked about those things and there are many videos and discussions on that stuff uh, for another time or you can look for it elsewhere well that's it folks if you enjoyed this video, please hit like. If you're new, subscribe. And I do many more videos out here on these trails talking about God, His kingdom, and the end times and those kinds of things. We'll see you soon, Lord willing. If we're not raptured, if I'm not censored. God bless, folks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.